Today I'm talking about The Inner Life by Thomas Akempis. I know you don't care about this, but I don't know where I got this from, and I'm really confused about it, because it says $10 on the back, and only lists the first 10 of this series when there are 20 of them. How did I find you? Thomas Akempis was born in 1380 in the town Kempis in Germany, hence his name, Thomas from Kempis, and he spent his adulthood as a canon regular, which means that he was part of a community of priests that worked under the rule of St. Augustine, which was some sort of rules he set out for living a religious life a thousand years beforehand. This is all taken from Kempis's work, The Imitation of Christ. I don't know how much, I think it's about two thirds of the content of that. The Imitation of Christ is one of the world's most widely read devotional books, and it gives instructions how to live a humble spiritual life. To give you an overview on what it says, I'm going to read out some of the chapter titles. On control of the desires, on avoiding rash judgement, on deeds inspired by love, on loving Jesus above all things, on the royal road of the Holy Cross, how Christ speaks inwardly to the soul, on truth and humility, on the joy of God's service, on our own weakness and the trials of this life, on the evils of curiosity, on lasting peace and true progress, how we should bless God in all trouble, against the vain judgments of men, how when we lack strength for higher work we should undertake humble tasks, how God's grace is not granted to the worldly minded, on the corruption of nature and the power of grace, and the last chapter is titled that we should never despair. This started out quite philosophical. For example, we could enjoy much peace if we did not busy ourselves with what other people say and do, for this is no concern of ours. In judging others, we expend our energy to no purpose. We are often mistaken and easily sin. But as it goes on, it gets less instructional and I think more commanding. Christ says, direct all your efforts to the single purpose of pleasing me. Seek and desire myself alone. And a bit later on, Christ says, my son, renounce self and you shall find me. Retain no private choice or personal interest and you will always be the gainer. I'm an atheist, but I was brought up in a sort of Christian environment. I went to a school where Christian values were really important. And I just can't see how a campus's perspective on Christianity fits into the modern world. Maybe it's just because I only really know the Church of England and Protestant perspectives, but it feels like it's fear-mongering, especially since a lot of it is written from the voice of Christ. It makes it seem like that's the only way that religion should be interpreted. It doesn't allow any room for personal interpretation at all. Maybe in the 15th century, in like a monastic life, this way of living would have been good, but I don't think it fits at all into our modern society. I think it's kind of scary, and it's ludicrously self-serving. I could never agree with a piece of text that commands itself as the utter truth, and it's just, no, don't, no, didn't like it. I feel like, because it's so unwavering, it could catch any young, impressionable person and get all these ideas into their head that are profoundly negative ways of living happily, I think. You are greatly mistaken if you look for anything save to endure trials, for all this mortal life is full of troubles and everywhere marked with crosses. So you've been watching me get annoyed at Thomas O'Canvas's The Inner Life. Join us tomorrow for Niccolo Machiavelli's The Prince.